One of the biggest scientific accomplishments of the year 2014 was when a group of European astrophysicists successfully landed a satellite landing probe on a comet. Nice. One of the biggest internet dramas of 2014 was when one of these astrophysicists responsible for the comet landing got cancelled on Twitter by a group of outraged feminists, all because of a problematic shirt that he wore. Today we're going back to the year 2014, a time around the genesis of Gamergate, and I'm going to tell you all the story of Dr. Taylor and how a shirt he wore caused a wave of feminist outrage that nearly overshadowed the massive scientific accomplishment that him and his team achieved. Feminist freak out over scientists gr <laughs> This is fucking great. They just landed a probe on a giant floating mountain that has pre or pre precursors to human life on it. How about that, friend? I want to give a big shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. If you're in the market for a pair of affordable wireless earbuds, Raycon earbuds are the perfect option for you. Raycon earbuds sound fantastic, and not only that, they look sleek as hell and fit comfortably. Each pair of Raycons comes with a portable charging case that when fully charged can recharge your earbuds on the go. Recharge up to four times off one charge with the newest model, the Everyday E25s. Earlier I mentioned affordability. You'd be surprised with the bang for your buck that you get with Raycon. If you didn't know, Raycon was co-founded by Ray J and he had affordability in mind when it came to developing this product. Yeah, you're getting top tier wireless earbuds that will last years at a fraction of the cost anything Apple has to offer. You can save 15% off your purchase of Raycon products by clicking the promo link in the description box below. That's buyraycon.com slash wavywebsurf. So before I talk about the shirt gate controversy itself, I want to give context to the mission that Dr. Taylor was involved with, the Rosetta mission, the one responsible for landing a satellite on a comet. It was pretty important. The Rosetta mission was commissioned by the European Space Agency all the way back in 2004. The mission involved sending the Rosetta satellite along with Philae, its attached landing module, into space with the goal of researching asteroids and comets, and if possible, make history by performing the first successful comet landing ever. Rosetta had three targets it needed to reach. Two were asteroids within the asteroid belt, and the final target was a comet known as 67P. By 2010, Rosetta had performed successful flybys of both target asteroids, all while building up velocity using the gravitational pulls of both Earth and Mars. This velocity boost would be used to fling the satellite to the rendezvous point with Comet 67P, which when they met would be traveling at 780 meters per second at a specific location in space nearly 500 million kilometers away from Earth. When the Rosetta satellite built up enough velocity, it was yeeted into outer space in late 2010 and went on a four-year voyage en route to Comet 67P while in hibernation mode. During its hibernation flight back on Earth, there were some Rosetta mission leadership changes. As in 2013, the mission's original project scientist had retired. His replacement would be none other than the aforementioned Dr. Matthew Taylor. Dr. Taylor, aged 40 at the time of his hiring, was a University of Liverpool PhD graduate who had dedicated much of his career in science to studying space physics. My name is Matt Taylor. I'm the uh... European Space Agency project scientist for the Rosetta mission. I'm the scientific representation of the mission. I take all of the scientists' ideas and wishes and try and persuade the people that are, are, are steering the spacecraft or in charge of the spacecraft to, to do what we want and we try and meet in the middle in the best way. So you push technology as much as it can uh, to get the science that we want to do. Now, as far as astrophysicists go, Dr. Taylor is quite the character. He's not the stereotypical science geek often associated with space agency employees. Rather, he's been described as chill and laid back, a big fan of heavy metal music and tattoos. You can see him here getting a tattoo of the Rosetta satellite on his thigh while wearing a Cannibal Corpse t-shirt. But anyways, all eccentricities aside, Dr. Taylor was renowned within the European Space Agency for his brilliance, and not only that, he was seen as a charismatic leader. And all of these factors combined made the agency believe that Dr. Taylor would be the guy to make this comet landing operation go by smoothly. 
And speaking of which, as 2014 came around, Rosetta was drawing ever close to the planned rendezvous point with Comet 67P in deep space. And finally, on November 12th of 2014, Dr. Taylor and the European Space Agency would make history. This animation showcases the Rosetta satellite's movement in space along with its target rocks. The pink dot is the Rosetta satellite and the green dot is the 67P comet. Contact. Not only had Rosetta reached 67P, it successfully landed on it using Philae, its landing probe. This comet landing was a breakthrough in astronautics, as nothing like it had ever been done before. It made worldwide headlines, and for those involved in the project, it was a time of massive celebration. <laughs> Honestly, what does it feel like? Well, I told everyone we were going to land. <laughs> and interestingly, amidst the celebration is where we get into the shirt gate controversy itself. See, Dr. Taylor, likely feeling on top of the world on the day of the comet's landing, decided he would don a special piece of apparel to celebrate the event. This ceremonial garb, if you will, was a shirt, but not just any shirt. It was a bowler style button up shirt which featured a harem of scantily dressed cartoon women. He would wear this shirt during press briefings on the day of the comet's landing, many of which were live streamed online and broadcast on live television. Now you would think given the magnitude of what the scientists had accomplished that day, they would be given a pass to wear a silly shirt, but oh no, if you thought that you would be absolutely wrong. Because within hours of landing on a comet, Dr. Taylor found himself landing in the lion's den of feminist Twitter and progressive online journalist spheres, who collectively launched a campaign to cancel Dr. Taylor over what they thought was a problematic shirt. Thus begins Shirtgate. The criticism was that Dr. Taylor's shirt was inherently misogynistic, a symbol of toxic masculinity, and that it's people like him that were deterring women from entering STEM jobs, or jobs of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Within 24 hours, both terms Shirtgate and Shirtstorm were trending online, and Dr. Taylor was becoming well aware of the outrage caused from what he thought was an innocuous fashion statement. This should have been a time of triumph for Dr. Taylor, but unfortunately for him, it turned into one of shame and dismay. As the following day, a visibly exhausted Dr. Taylor appeared on a European Space Agency live stream and caved to his detractors, delivering a teary-eyed apology for wearing the shirt. Okay, um, the shirt I wore this week, um, I made a big mistake and I've offended many people and I'm very sorry about this. One of the brilliant scientists behind mankind's first landing on a comet was actually in tears today and not over this amazing story, this, this first in space history, the 10 years in the making, but over a shirt. You see this? Critics decried Matt Taylor's shirt, calling it sexist. After Dr. Taylor's apology, many of his feminist detractors moved on. However, this isn't the end of the story. As those on the other side of the fence of this matter, particularly those jaded from Gamergate, which began only months prior, felt that this was yet another example of what they perceived as authoritarian feminist ideologues making trouble out of nothing, making a mountain out of a molehill. There is something going on, and what it is is women being harassed and threatened and terrorized for After you first attacked male gamers for enjoying looking at big-breasted women with tiny armor that barely covers their nipples. <laughs> what is wrong with that? I like what that looks like. Does the attempts of the feminist to cancel Dr. Taylor inadvertently created a massive wave of support for the doctor? But when you make a major scientific breakthrough, 
all anyone can talk about is what one of the guys was wearing. Let's let's just let's just destroy the human race. Let's just all die. But he wore a T-shirt with some semi-clad women on it in the moment of his greatest scientific triumph, one of the greatest scientific triumphs that the public consume without getting confused. And women are all, you better apologize. You are making this scientist cry. Don't care that this person that you are blaming has spent 15 years to, to achieve this. If a woman wore that, would you do anything other than laugh? Would you be like, what is this crazy shirt you got yeah. on? Who would be offended? Who would see if a woman was on television and she had just landed a fucking comet, landed a robot on a comet, and it took 12 years to get there. And she's sitting there, and she has a, a, a t-shirt on, and it has pictures of guys blowing each other on it. <laughs> who, who would be like, this bitch, this fucking bitch, she thinks she could do that and put that in my face? Even Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks would support Dr. Taylor, and that's saying a lot. Nothing on the planet frustrates me more today than this ridiculous story. This is a freaking scientist that did something amazing, of course with the help of his colleagues, and we're having a discussion about cartoon women on his freaking button-down shirt. The shirt is ugly, don't get me wrong, but it's not <laughs> offensive. Okay, so I want to give you an example. The pushback against the shirt gate controversy and the feminists that started it was overwhelming. People started up independent fundraisers for Dr. Taylor, even going to the lengths of creating reprints of his infamous shirt and selling them to interested buyers as a spiteful act of defiance to those who felt his shirt toxic or inappropriate. As far as popular opinion was concerned, it was clear that the public felt as if Dr. Taylor's contribution to science far outweighed any potential social justice infraction his shirt may have caused. Dr. Taylor has never publicly commented on the Shirtgate situation after his apology, and I honestly believe his apology at the time to be sincere. It's unknown exactly what his opinion on the situation is now, close to six years later. It appears rather than dwelling on this situation, he moved on and continued contributing to science. He would work on the Rosetta mission until it ended on September 30th of 2016. The work done by Dr. Taylor and the scientists he led in the Rosetta mission provided invaluable research in regards to asteroids and comets. These up-close photos of a comet's surface would not exist without the Rosetta team. What they did truly will leave a mark on history. And how will Shirtgate and the efforts of the feminist Twitter activists that tried to cancel Dr. Taylor be remembered? Well, the movement was collectively dunked on by the internet and was forgotten about approximately one week after it started. But hey, I guess it's relevant enough to make it into a wavy web surf video like six years later, so good on you guys. <laughs> but anyways, let me know what you thought about this video down below, guys, and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.